The Flatlanders need a store to sell their gems and more If they need it really quick, Angular will do the trick Directed to set the stage in your HTML page Controllers give your app the behavior that it lacks Write expression so that you can add your data to the view And modules make connections with dependency injections You're a scripting connoisseur when shaping up with Angular JS. Welcome to Shaping Up with Angular. I'm Greg Pollock, and in level one, we'll be giving you an introduction to what is Angular. We'll show you the application we'll be building together in this course, and then introducing you to the core elements of any Angular application. In order to learn Angular, it's important that you're very familiar with HTML and CSS, as well as JavaScript. If you're not familiar with JavaScript, Code School's got a great course, JavaScript Road Trip, which you should go check out. It's also nice if you know some testing tools, behavior-driven development, test-driven development, because Angular is really easy to test, and you should be doing that in a professional application. Not so important, you don't need to know jQuery, Ruby on Rails, Python, PHP, or any of those back-end frameworks. Angular is just a front-end framework, so all you need to know is JavaScript. You may want to use Angular when you're using JavaScript to build any sort of dynamic website. Angular is going to help you organize your JavaScript code. It's going to help you create responsive websites, meaning they're fast, they respond quickly to user input. Also, if you're familiar with jQuery, Angular plays really well with jQuery, and it's also, as I mentioned before, really easy to test, which means you can create maintainable software. Let's dive a little deeper into this word responsive and, and see what I mean. So here's the Code School website. And you'll see that when I click on a link, like screencast, the page goes blank for a second and then reloads that page. And then I click on something else, and it goes and it processes and brings up something, and I get to see that page. This is a traditional page refresh response cycle. But what's going on behind the curtains? So here we have our browser and our web server. And our browser is going to initiate a request to our server. The server responds with the web pages and assets, the HTML and JavaScript, and our browser loads up the entire web page. But when the user clicks on a link, initiates a new request, and the server responds with the new web page and assets, the browser is going to load up the entire web page again. Obviously, laid out like this, it's not quite efficient. So now, here's an example of a web page I would call responsive. This is our recent Discover Drive course. You'll see when I click around this page, the page refresh is almost unnoticeable. The page is so responsive and quick every time we click on a link. So what's going on here? Well, behind the curtains, when a request is first fired off, the server responds back with all the web page and assets, as you might expect, and the browser loads up the entire web page. This time, when a user clicks a link, something different is going to happen. It's only going to request the information it needs to update the page. In this case, just some JSON data. Once our browser has this data, it's going to load it into the existing page and update what we see on our browser. An increasing number of applications these days are building their own APIs. They might do this to interface with a mobile application, say on iOS. They might also build an API so that other developers can build applications that communicate with their application. They might also build APIs to communicate with front-end applications, like the application we're building in this course using Angular. So in this course, we'll be building a front-end application using Angular, which will communicate with a back-end application. But we're not going to be building that back-end application. We're just going to focus on the front-end. A simple definition of Angular is a client-side JavaScript framework for adding interactivity to HTML. We need to figure out how to tell our HTML when to trigger our JavaScript. So here we have some HTML. How might we tell it to call this function, which triggers an alert? In Angular, we add behavior to our HTML through directives. A directive is a marker on an HTML tag that tells Angular to run or reference some JavaScript code. So the answer here is to add the attribute ngController to our body tag, 
setting it equal to store controller, which is the name of our function. And if we loaded this up, we might get this alert. Obviously, this is a really contrived example, and you would never actually write this Angular code. But you get the gist of it. Directives. It's how we bind the behavior. The application we'll be building in the rest of this course is our Flatlander store. In it, you can see we have several thumbnails of different products. We can tab through different information about each of them, and we have reviews. You'll see a list of reviews, and we'll even be able to submit our own review using this form here. The first step, if you want to start playing with Angular, is to download the library from the official website. In the application we'll be building in this course, we're going to be using Twitter Bootstrap, which you also might want to download. And feel free to follow along. Let's start coding up our HTML. You can see here we've included the CSS for Twitter Bootstrap, and we've included the Angular library, which we downloaded as well. The next component of our Angular application that we need to learn about is modules. Modules are where we write pieces of our Angular application. It's how we keep our code encapsulated. Because of this, it makes our code more maintainable, more readable, and more testable. Also, it's where we define all of the dependencies for our application. Because we might run one module, and we can tell our code this module depends on these two modules. So it shouldn't surprise you that the very piece of code that you write in Angular is a module line. So we're going to write var app, that's our application, equals Angular, that's the AngularJS library, dot module, because we're creating a new module. We give it a name, in this case, store, and then in that little array syntax, we define dependencies. We don't have any dependencies yet, but we still have to send in an empty array. Because that's how we roll. This piece of code is going to live inside an app.js file. So we're going to need to include that in our HTML, as you can see right here. Then we'll need to add an attribute to our HTML tag. In this case, ng-app equals store. ng-app, remember, is another directive. This directive creates an Angular application by running this module when the document loads. The module isn't doing anything yet, but just by including it, it's going to treat the HTML inside of this element as part of the Angular app. And this means we can start writing expressions. Expressions are how we insert dynamic values into our HTML. Here's some basic ones just using numerical operations. So if we say I am 4 plus 6, that's going to render out on the page as I am 10. We could also do string operations saying hello plus you, and that's going to evaluate to hello you, as you might expect. We'll be using lots of expressions inside of our Angular application, but for more examples, check out this URL. So if I move hello you into our Angular application, and I load it up locally in my browser, I'm going to get hello you, just as you might expect. So we learned about directives, modules, and expressions. Why don't you try putting them all together in the challenges, and I'll see you in the next section.